This podcast is brought to you by Australia's LGBTQIA plus community media organisation, Joy. Keep Joy on air by becoming a member, a subscriber or donate. Head to joy.org.au. Joy, a diverse sound for a diverse community. From Los Angeles, California to Joy 94.9, this is LA Spins, the weekly entertainment show on everything that's hot in LA and Hollywood. Now, here's your host, Peter Reynolds. Adele's Las Vegas residency was destined for trouble before the singer postponed her shows. The Planet Hollywood run, which was scheduled to begin January 21st, was heading for disaster amidst explosive arguments with set designer Esmeralda Devlin. The fights became so bad, with insiders blaming Adele for behaving like a diva. Well, at least rumor has it. Camila Cabello was seen stepping into sex shop Adam and Eve in West Hollywood. The store sells vibrators, bondage accessories, lubes, and lingerie. The Havana singer, 24, did make a purchase. Well, it has been three months since her breakup from longtime boyfriend Sean Mendez, so perhaps she was just buying a little something for the south of her border. Cardi B was awarded $1.25 million in her lawsuit against blogger Tasha Kay for defamation, invasion of privacy, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Tasha Kay had spread false allegations that Cardi had herpes and worked as a prostitute. Cardi claimed seeing the false claims made her feel depressed and suicidal. Not anymore! A 2018 clip of Post Malone in which he referenced the U.S. government as the biggest lie in the world and urged people to move out to the country is making its way around TikTok. The clip has over 2 million views. He's bought a doomsday home for himself in Utah, which has all the bells and whistles to protect him from the apocalypse. Hey, Posty, any room for me? Staten Island natives Pete Davidson and Colin Jost grew up riding the Staten Island Ferry. The Saturday Night Live cast members, along with comedy club owner Paul Italia, cast the winning bid for a decommissioned Staten Island Ferry boat during a city auction. The group plans to turn the ship into a floating entertainment venue. That Pete Davidson sure gets around. Controversial musician Kid Rock has released a profanity-laced new single that bashes President Biden and Dr. Anthony Fauci over vaccine mandates and other policies. The Redneck Paradise singer dropped the new song along with two others to promote his upcoming Bad Reputation tour, which he claims could be his last. Yep, let's hope so. The Fugees have been forced to cancel their reunion tour due to COVID. Yeah, the formerly estranged hip-hop group apologized to fans for backing out of the concerts, which were intended to celebrate the 25th anniversary of their album, The Score. Well, between the band breaking up and Lauryn Hill not showing up to her shows, fans are pretty much used to being disappointed. 50 Cent and Love and Hip Hop's Mona Scott Young will try to solve some of rap's most notorious murders in the new TV series Hip Hop Homicides. The eight-part series will focus on the mysterious deaths of Biggie Smalls, Tupac Shakur, and more. Fitty himself survived being shot nine times back in 2000, and now he's filthy stinking alive. I, I mean rich. Just hours after apologizing to Taylor Swift about comments he made questioning her songwriting abilities, Gorillaz and Blur frontman Damon Albarn dedicated his final song at an L.A. concert to the L.A. Times writer whose interview set off the whole dust-up. Hey Damon, you said Taylor doesn't write her own songs, which is false. And don't take on Taylor Swift. You'll lose. Idiot of the Week Zach Davis, the fiancé of Teen Mom OG star Cheyenne Floyd, was arrested while going through customs at L.A. airport. Davis was returning home with Floyd following a vacation in Mexico. He had outstanding warrants for violating probation in several cases, including theft and DUI. Zach Davis, idiot! 
Arnold Schwarzenegger was involved in a multi-car accident in the L.A. neighborhood of Brentwood. The Terminator actor, 74, was driving a GMC Yukon that collided with a red Prius, rolling over the smaller vehicle before continuing to rotate and also hitting a Porsche Cayenne. The driver of the Prius sustained a head injury and was unable to take any selfies. Kelly Clarkson's ex-husband, Brandon Blackstock, has won a small legal victory in their long battle over their Montana ranch. Clarkson has agreed to fork over 5.12% of the ranch, which translates into about $900,000 of its hefty $18 million price tag. Uh, how many lawyers did it take to come up with 5.12%? Legendary singer Meatloaf has died. His Bat Out of Hell album is one of the biggest in music history, selling over 43 million units. He was outspokenly anti-vaccine before his death, saying, quote, If I die, I die, but I'm not going to be controlled, unquote. Well, he'll do anything for love, but he won't get vaxxed. R.I.P. Kanye West demanded that he get to see the final cut of the new Netflix documentary, Genius, just days before it premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. The 44-year-old man baby posted, quote, open the edit room immediately so I can be in charge of my own image, unquote. The film's supposed to be released on February 16th. Doubt it. The Trash Bin. Actor Garrett Hedlund was arrested for public intoxication in Nashville. The Friday Night Lights star, 37, was arrested the day after he split from girlfriend Emma Roberts. The two share a one-year-old son together. An insider said that they're trying their best to co-parent and it's been hard. Uh, yeah, these two co-parenting? Good luck! The News Wrap-Up Netflix stock took a dive after a lower-than-expected subscriber gain in the fourth quarter of 21. Amazon is launching an apparel store this year in the L.A. suburb of Glendale called Amazon Style. Four attorneys general have sued Google for allegedly tracking you without permission. Peloton announced it's halting production of its bikes and treadmills as demand wanes. Yep, stress up. Peloton down. And now, this week's number ones. The number one movie. Spider-Man No Way Home remains on top of the box office. The number one album. It's still the Encanto soundtrack. The number one app. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is still the top paid app. The number one book. Enough Already by Valerie Bertinelli is the top nonfiction book. Charlie Puth is back with a new record for the first time in four years and reveals that he created most of the album on TikTok. Puth said, quote, My goal for this album is for everybody to know every song title before it comes out. I love the fact that my new song, Light Switch, has been teased for months and people are making bootlegs of it. Some producers have even run it through Isotope, taken the acapellas, and made their own versions of Light Switch. I love that. I think music should be twisted and pulled in many different directions. That was the goal for this album. Unquote. Charlie says he scrapped the original songs for the album because he didn't like any of the music that he was writing in 2019. Well, we're glad he's back and we love his new track. Here's Charlie Puth with the song of the week, Light Switch.
That was Charlie Puth with the song of the week, Light Switch. Visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash LA Spins. You know, with a Z. And that's what's happening in LA and Hollywood. For LA Spins, I'm Peter Reynolds. So long from the City of Angels. Thanks for listening to another Joy podcast brought to you by Australia's LGBTQIA plus community media organisation, Joy. Help us keep Joy on air. Head to joy.org.au. Joy, a diverse sound for a diverse community.